I started the first children's film festival in the Americas, and I worked with half a million children over 30 plus years. I watched 1,000 kids' films every year. In fact, I'm pretty sure I logged 16,000 viewing hours of children's media. But about 20 years ago, two pediatricians from the American Academy of Pediatrics came to one of my festivals. They were fascinated by how I spoke to children before the screening. And one of them said, you're changing brain chemistry around screen time. Well, that changed everything for me. So I left my festivals and I started an organization to help schools and parents implement what I had learned over 30 plus years of watching screens with kids and more importantly, listening to them talk. But here's what we're still up against. 1,600 hours a year with screens and now more needed for remote viewing. Thousands of studies linking screen time with obesity, bullying, elevated aggression, early porn exposure. It's a laundry list of everything we don't want for our kids. What I learned over all my years working with children's festivals is what we all need to do for and with our children. Focus on what to do before the screen goes on. You didn't send your child to the playground or to preschool without some positive guidelines. When it comes to digital devices, to computers, tablets, smartphones, same rules, the same values and courtesy and kindness and caring that we use in our families apply to the way we use digital devices. So what I did was to create a program that took everything I'd learned and I brought it to schools for teachers to train students and I wrote a book so parents could use these techniques at home in all my programs. We prime children's minds before they start using electronic screens. By doing this, we are helping children to be mindful instead of mindless users of technology. We call it turning on the mind before turning on the screen. So, what do we do? There are two parts to the approach. The kinesthetic physical part and the intellectual academic part. You see, children need to use their physical bodies and energy to learn, and here's why. There's a lot of research that shows physical exercise and activity build brain function. So exercise is brain food. You move more, you learn better. So I created a series of fun, fast brain-body exercises and micro-movements that teachers and parents and kids can do anywhere. We always start with priming the mind to turbocharge e-learning. We tell kids we're going to use our energy and our concentration to keep our minds awake. Then we might pick up micro-movements, isolation exercises. There's an exercise called palate shell, which is like yoga for the fingers. These kinesthetic, physical parts of the program boost self-regulation and classroom engagement in only 30 to 60 seconds. Parents and teachers can then go right back to the lesson they've planned. These are timely, simple strategies that turn remote or real classrooms into dynamic learning environments. The second part of the program is intellectual. We take that elevated energy and focus and use it to build social, emotional, and academic learning in an inquiry-based, child-centered approach. What we do is teach literacy, emotional intelligence, and higher order thinking through close analysis of short, story-based videos using a technique that we call pause and question, or P and Q. When we pause a video, we'll ask questions like, what do you think that character is feeling right now? Or is there any clue on that screen that might tell you what the character is feeling? 
So during pause and question, we are drilling down into how children watch and helping them understand what they're feeling and thinking while they're using technology. When you put these two engines together, the kinesthetic brain body part and the academic social emotional learning part, you get true accelerated learning. And I know because I field tested this curriculum for nine years with thousands of children in some of the most challenged schools in Chicago. I worked in schools where 100% of kids lived in families with incomes at the federal poverty line, where 20% of children in a single classroom are on the autism spectrum, or 40 languages were spoken among the student body. The results never failed to astonish. In 2014, one principal came to four sessions of the 12-week program. Principals are busy, so I asked her, what are you doing here? I mean, don't you have to run the school? She said, it's addictive seeing how much these children are learning in such a short period of time. Year after year, the results were so phenomenal that I can now say we can close the achievement gap using healthy tech habits to accelerate learning. You see, we're just building on something kids already love. They love screens, they love media, and if we give them a chance, they love talking and thinking about the ideas they have while they're using digital devices. And here's why that's so important. First, because it empowers children and gives them the feeling that what they're saying matters. And second, because when children talk about audiovisual content and make critical thinking connections, they are learning to process that content and they're building better media filters. Ms. Frankie Betts, who was one of the most loving and perceptive of the pre-K teachers with whom we worked, said, this program teaches children to focus and think. Well, Ms. Betts inspired me because she echoed anthropologist Margaret Mead, who said, don't teach children what to think, teach them how to think. And that is the greatest gift we can give our children, inspiring them to love thinking and learning.